Welcome to the Hall of the Universe. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, and tonight we're featuring my interview with world-renowned physicist and cosmologist Stephen Hawking. Whoa! I picked his legendary brain on everything from the Big Bang to the origins of the universe. So, let's do this. <laughs> Professor Hawking, thanks for agreeing to be on Star Talk. And let me just start off with uh, a first question, perhaps the most pressing question to us all. What's your favorite food? For me, it's pizza. Actually, New York pizza. Oysters. Oysters? A little slippery for me, but that's cool. OK, how about your favorite drink? Pims. Pims, ooh. <laughs> I like pina coladas myself, but if it's not alcoholic, I would do a milkshake. OK, last question. Last question. What's your favorite equation? I know you've got one. The equation I discovered relating the entropy of a black hole to the area of its horizon. S equals A over 4. How many people get to say their favorite equation is one they came up with? <laughs> That's badass. <laughs> you hold the same endowed chair that Isaac Newton did. I'm just wondering if we had some way to communicate through time with him and tell him about what life is like today. Are there any questions, any problems you might want to hand him to solve? Is the solar system stable? And what happens to a star that cannot support itself against its own gravity? Hmm. So you're thinking if Newton saw those questions, he might give us deeper insights into black holes. I'd be curious. Stephen, you've been in that zero-G airplane. I've always wanted to go. I just wondered what it felt like for you. It was wonderful to float weightless, free of my wheelchair. I could have gone on and on and on. Hmm. Well, one day I'll try to do that, too, see what that's like. One problem for me, I get nauseous and I'm worried I throw up. <laughs> So, Stephen, will we ever have the ability to travel backwards in time? I'm thinking not simply because if we ever did obtain that ability, we would have met somebody by now from the future. One might hope that we could warp space-time so that one could go off in a rocket and come back in the past. But I have shown that this is not possible if energy density is always non-negative. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that's a big if. <laughs> all we have to do is create negative energy density stuff. Then we'll all be able to travel backwards in time. So, Stephen, you've said publicly that you want us to be a multi-planet species. And uh, who could argue that? I'm, I'm with you there. However, I have one mild rebuttal. Because you defend that argument by saying something bad could happen here on Earth an asteroid, a runaway virus, rendering us all extinct. And if we exist only on one planet, that's the end of the human species. I get that. But here's my mild rebuttal. Isn't it easier to deflect an asteroid, easier to find a super serum that will combat any deadly virus than it is to terraform Mars and ship a billion people there? Collision with an asteroid is one of the least of the dangers we now face. Hmm. The last collision was 70 million years ago. Nuclear war, climate change, and pollution are now much greater threats. Of course, it would be impossible to move the population of the Earth to a new planet. But if we can establish independent self-sustaining colonies in space, it would ensure the survival of the human race in the event of a disaster on Earth. Leaving Earth will also give us a new perspective and cause us to look outwards rather than inwards. It would also unite us to face a common challenge. So, Stephen, 
if we ever really develop the technology to upload your brain into some computer providing life after death or at least consciousness after death would you be first to sign up for that my body hardly works at all because i have motor neuron disease otherwise known as als so getting rid of it would be no loss and would spare me discomfort being immortal as solely a brain i could see the future unless I was terminated by someone switching off the computer or by a computer virus. And I wanted to hear more about Stephen Hawking's perspective on life. And so I asked him, who's his favorite non-scientist? Check it out. A few years ago, I would have said Nelson Mandela. He brought a peaceful solution to a seemingly impossible situation. There is no one of his stature today. Mm. Certainly not Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so over the course of your life, you've had a sort of unique perspective on science, on technology, endurance. If you sort of sum that together and offer some insight for us, any lessons? that we can take with us. We must all do the best we can in whatever situation we are in. Never give up. Never give up. Clearly that advice applies to us all. It's a privilege to spend this time with you. Thanks for your thoughts and your insights and being a source of inspiration to us all. Thank you.